Reader, beware, you're in for a scare. With R.L. Stein's Goosebumps Horrorland. Book One. Revenge of the Living Dummy. Chapter 14. Mum, please don't make me take Ethan, I begged. Mum bit her lip. Brittany, you have no choice, she said. You promised him, remember? You have to take him. She straightened her hair in front of the, mi the hall mirror, in the front hall mirror, and picked up her and picked up the car keys. It was nearly four the next afternoon. She was ready to drive us to perform at Sunset House, my great aunt's retirement home. Brittany, do you have all your art supplies? Packed up. Put them in the boot, she said. Oh, the boot! I thought the Americans called it the trunk. <laughs> okay. She started the door. Now she started to the door, but I grabbed her arm. Mum, you're not listening to me, I said. If we take Ethan, something terrible is going to happen. Stop it, right now, she said. Go call your cousin. He's upstairs practicing his comedy act. My throat felt tight and dry. I know you don't believe me, I said, but I'm not making this up. Mr. Bad Boy is alive, Mum. He's alive, and he's evil. Mum slammed the car keys down on the hallway shelf. She glared at me angrily. Enough! She said. Enough, enough, enough! You're acting like a total baby, Brittany! But Mum, I can prove it, I said. She raised her, she raised her hand. Enough! Enough! Not another word. I mean it. Not another word about that dummy. My breath caught in my throat. I felt so hurt and angry. Mum always believed me before Ethan came to live with us. She always trusted me. She always talked about how grown up I was. And now... She pointed to the stairs. Go get Ethan. Great Aunt Ruth is waiting. I let out a long sigh and started up the stairs. I knew if I brought Ethan and Mr. Bad Boy with me, something terrible would happen. But what could I do? A short while later, Mum pulled up the car, pulled the car up, up the long driveway to Sunset House. We passed by tall hedges and a rolling lawn with beds of red and yellow flowers. People sat in chairs around a bubbling fountain, talking and reading. The house was a tall brick building. The afternoon sunlight reflected off the many windows, making the whole house appear to glow. I pulled my art supplies from the boot and waved to Mum and she drove away. Great Aunt Ruth was waiting for Ethan and me in the front hall. She is almost 85, but she looks a lot younger. She has short, straight black hair, and she wears a lot of makeup and bright red lipstick. Today she wore faded jeans with embroidery on the pockets and a pale blue shirt that tied at the waist. After giving Ethan and me bone-crushing hugs, she began chattering a mile a minute, asking about everyone in the family. A short, plump, grey-haired woman wearing a grey trouser suit stepped up with a smile. Brittany, this is so nice of you, she said. Hi, Mrs. Berman, I said. She's the director of the house. This is my cousin, Ethan. 
he's going to perform with his dummy. Oh, excellent, she said. Come this way. Your audience is waiting for you in the re in the rec room. We followed her down the hall into the room. Folding chairs had been set up in three rows. About twenty people turned when we came in. Most of them were white-haired. Two were in wheelchairs, and I saw a lot of canes and zimmer frames. I put down my pain case and started to set up my easel. Ethan took a seat in the corner and plopped Mr. Bad Boy on his lap. This is Ruth's niece, Brittany Crosby, Mrs. Berman announced. She is going to give you all a painting lesson. And Brittany's cousin, Evan, Ethan, is going to put on a puppet show. It's Ethan! No, it's Ethan! Mr. Bad Boy shouted. People began to murmur. A few people laughed. I opened my paint jars and turned to the audience. I know a lot of you like to draw and paint, I said. So I thought, louder please, a woman in the front row shouted. So I thought today I'd... She's deaf, another woman, yelled, another woman called out. She won't hear you no matter how loud you shout. A lot of people laughed. Great Aunt Ruth turned in her seat and shushed everyone. I took a deep breath and continued. Since we're in Sunset House, I thought I'd show you how to paint a beautiful sunset with just two colours, red and yellow. I picked up the brush and began to mix colours. Maybe she could paint my room. Maybe she could paint my room. A man in the back row said to the woman next to him. Maybe she could paint my nails, the woman said. They were both shouting. They must have been nearly deaf. I could feel my legs start to shake. Mama warned me it would be a tough audience. I turned and saw Great Aunt Ruth smiling at me. I decided to keep my eyes on her for the rest of the demonstration. What is she painting? I don't get this modern art. Look, she dripped on the floor. I should have worn earplugs. <clears throat> I should have worn earplugs. But I hummed to myself to drown them out. And I kept working my brush on the canvas. The sunset painting turned out really well, maybe the best sunset I'd ever done. But when I stepped away from it, everyone cheered and clapped. Even the woman who wanted me to paint her nails, Great Aunt Ruth, blew me a kiss. I could tell how proud she was. I felt really happy. But then I remembered what was coming next, and my stomach tightened in dread. Here's Ethan, I announced to everyone, with his good friend Mr. Bad Boy. As Ethan pressed me, as Ethan passed me, I whispered, Don't mess up. I'll try, he whispered back. Why did he look so frightened? I wonder why. Chapter 15 Ethan pulled his folding chair to the front of the room. He sat down and bounced the dummy on his lap. Which one is Ethan? A woman whispered loudly. A few people laughed. Ethan cleared his throat and turned to the grinning dummy. You're going to be a good boy today, aren't you, Mr. Bad Boy? Mr. Bad Boy shook his head no. I'm a bad boy! Know how I can tell when someone is old? He asked Ethan. How? By the smell, Mr. Bad Boy tossed back his head and cackled. That's not funny, Ethan scolded him. 
Yeah, Mr. Bad Boy shot back. That joke stinks, and so do they. A few people gasped. The room grew very quiet. Mr. Bad Boy's George cli jaws clicked up and down. Ethan, do you want to know the difference between an old person and roadkill? No, Ethan said. Neither do I. Or do you know the difference? Sorry, I had one. I did want to anyway. Mr. Bad Boy cried and laughed his high pitched, high laugh again. That is not allowed. Mrs. Berman shouted from the back of the room. Ethan, your jokes are insulting people. Your face is insulting me, Mr. Bad Boy exclaimed. I've seen pimples that were prettier than you. I shut my eyes. I just wanted to disappear. This couldn't be happening. I'm a bad boy, Mr. Bad Boy shouted. He turned his head to a woman with curly white hair and bright red lips. Is that a new skirt? The dummy asked her. Or are you wearing your intestines on the outside? Mrs. Berman stormed towards the front of the room, swinging tight fists at her sides. Her face was as red as my sunset painting. Ethan, I have to ask you to stop, she said. Ethan jumped up. I'm really sorry, he said. Sometimes Mr. Bad Boy acts up. But I know he'll be good now. Mrs. Berman glared at him. Your jokes are not acceptable. I promise he'll behave, Ethan said. He shot me a nervous glance. Then he turned back to the audience. I need a volunteer. Could you come up and talk to Mr. Bad Boy, ma'am? I promise he'll be good. Please, come up here. I realised I was holding my breath. What did Ethan plan to do? Or more important, what did Mr. Bad Boy plan to do? Ethan kept pleading with her, though finally a grey-haired woman in a flowery brown and yellow house dress stood up and slowly walked up beside the grinning dummy. She shook Mr. Bad Boy's hand. Are you going to be a good boy? she asked, grinning at Ethan. Mr. Bad Boy's eyes blinked up and down. I like your dress, he said. Interesting colours. Or did you spit up your breakfast this morning? I gasped. Now I knew for sure I had no doubts at all. The dummy was alive and out of control. The woman laughed. You're naughty, she said. Someone should spank you. I'd like to spank you too, Mr. Bad Boy replied. But with that face, I can't tell which end to spank. Okay. I turned and saw Mrs. Berman shaking her head and frowning. Which colour do you like in Britney's painting? Mr. Bad Boy asked the woman. The red or the yellow? She studied my painting for a moment. The red, I guess. And then, it all happened so quickly, it was a total blur. I saw, I saw the jar of red paint swing up into the air. Was it in Mr. Bad Boy's hand? Or did Ethan hold the jar? I couldn't see. But I saw the jar swing high, and I saw the red paint come splashing out. It made a loud... <laughs> sp 
splat as it burst over the woman's face. It ran down her cheeks, down her skirt, and puddled on her shoes. Her mouth dropped open in shock. She staggered back, wiping paint from her eyes, but Mr. But Mr. Bad Boy wasn't finished. Now the yellow paint jar was in the air, and a tidal wave of thick yellow paint splashed over the woman's hair. I'm a bad boy! Mr. Bat, Mr. Bad Boy shouted. Mrs. Berman leaped forward and tried to pull the dummy from Ethan's arms, and I rushed to the front of the room, my brain spinning. I knew I had to do something to help, but I tripped over my easel. The whole thing collapsed under me, and I fell face down on my painting. Oh! I groaned and tried to pull myself to my feet. Smears of red and yellow paint stuck to the front of my jumper. I heard people stampeding from the room. Some were crying, others were shouting angrily. A disaster, I thought, a total disaster. Raising my eyes, I glared at the ugly dummy, and as I started, he tossed back his head and roared with laughter. Chapter 16 Molly, where is your dad? I have to talk to him. That night, I was so upset, I was too upset to eat dinner. I rushed up to my room and slammed the door behind me. Then I dropped onto the edge of my bed and punched Molly's number into my mobile phone. I told you, Molly replied. He's on some island near Australia. I haven't heard a word from him since he left. Well, when is he coming back? My voice cracked. It's a real emergency. Molly was silent for a moment. Brick, come over. You'll feel better if you get out of the house. I can't, I moaned. I'm grounded. Probably for life. Mrs. Berman at Sunset House? She reported the whole thing to school. I don't believe it, but she blamed me for everything. She said I invited Ethan, so I had to know what kind of jokes he did. She said I had to know what Ethan planned to do. Oh, wow, Molly muttered. Bad news. That's totally unfair. Tell me about it, I groaned. Then Mrs. Berman called my mum and told her about it. I'm so in trouble everywhere. I'm not allowed to leave my room at night, and, and meanwhile, get this. Dad had hockey tickets, but he couldn't return. So he took Ethan to the hockey game. It's so not fair. Ethan is a total freak, Molly said. I can't believe he's your cousin. Ethan isn't the problem, I said. It's Mr. Bad Boy. He's alive, Molly. He's evil. And Ethan is too scared to do anything about it. But Brit, Molly, I'm begging you to believe me, I said. No one else will. I'm not even allowed to mention the dummy out to my... I'm not even allowed to mention the dummy to my mum or dad. But your dad, he believed me. He knows about this stuff, right? Well, Molly said, Dad has done research on ventriloquist dummies. I know he's collected a lot of magazine articles and papers. Come over, Brit. Sneak out and come over. We can try to find his file. I was totally desperate. So I sneaked out the back door and ran all the way to Molly's house. She greeted me in a pale blue t-shirt and red and white boxers. She had just washed her hair 
and a red bath towel wrapped around her like a turban. Wrapped round her head like a turban, sorry. We turned on as many lights in the attic as we could, but the room still gave me the creeps. With ugly stuffed creatures and strange dolls staring out at us from glass from the glass cases, I stopped to gaze at the empty shelf that had held the mind stealer doll. A shiver rolled down my back as I pictured the graveyard in the rain. Molly pulled me into her dad's library at the far end of the attic. One wall was lined with tall grey filing cabinets. We began pouring through the filing drawers, bulging with articles and magazines and photos and research papers, all about weird stuff Mr Malloy was into. The weird, about all the weird stuff that Mr Malloy was into. After about 20 minutes of searching, I pulled out a heavy file, a heavy file marked ventriloquism. Molly, check it out, I said. I lugged it to the desk, spread it open, and Molly and I began shifting through all the papers. Molly wrinkled her forehead. What exactly are we looking for? I sighed. Anything that will help me prove to my parents that Mr. Bad Boy has to be destroyed, I... I... My words caught in my throat. I stared out. I stared at the wrinkled and faded black and white photo in front of, in front of me. I don't believe it, I gasped. It's Ethan's dummy. Look. Molly lowered her face to the photo and studied it. The same chip on his bottom lip, she murmured. The same wicked smile. The same ugly grin, I said. My hand trembled as I picked up the photo and turned it over. The back was covered in tiny type. I squinted to read it. It says the dummy's real name is Slappy. I told Molly, and, and I was right, he's totally evil, my heart punched as I scanned the words, it says Slappy was made by a magician sometime in the late 1800s, I said, an evil sorcerer, the wood he used was cursed, he built the dummy from a stolen coffin, that's bad news, Molly blinked, Oh, wow. I wish Dad was here. It says the dummy turns its owners into slaves, I continued. It's power mad. It wants to enslave everyone it meets. And, and... My eyes skipped to the bottom. I gasped and grabbed Molly's arm. Listen to this, Molly. It has a lo- It has a look. A load of weird words at the bottom of the page. It says, Say these six ancient words to wake him up and to put him to sleep. You're kidding. Molly grabbed the photo from my hands and stared at it. This is excellent, Brittany. What are we waiting for? She handed the photo back to me. Then she unwound the towel from her head and began drying her coppery hair. Come on. Hurry, Brit, let's do it. Let's shout the words in front of Slappy and put him back to sleep forever. You said Ethan is away at a hockey game, right? As we race down the attic stairs, I raised the photo and read the ancient words silently one more time. Were my worries over? Would the words put Slappy to sleep? Why did they never adapt this one into an episode of the TV show? Chapter 17 
I slipped into my house through the back door. I signalled to Molly to be quiet. Then we tiptoed across the kitchen to the front hall. I heard a thud of dance music from the den and glimpsed Mum on the sofa with a magazine in her lap. Mum doesn't dance, but she loves disco music, the louder the better. So she didn't hear Molly and me as we hurried up the stairs and then made our way into the attic. Ethan had left all the lights on in his room. The place was a mess. He had dirty clothes heaped everywhere, PlayStation game discs and manga comics scattered all over the floor, an open bag of crisps, and they normally call them chips in America, on his computer keyboard, empty soda cans and balled up jeans on his, dead, on his bed. Molly and I stepped through the mess to the far end of the room. Slappy was propped up in the brown leather armchair by the window. The dummy's hands rested on their arms. And stared straight ahead. We know your secrets, Slappy, I said. My voice sounded funny, shrill and tight. My chest felt all fluttery. I tapped the dummy's wooden head. See? I even know your real name. I expected him to move or speak, but he just kept staring at the other wall. Molly dropped down on the edge of Ethan's clattered bed, cluttered bed. I could see she was frightened too. Don't mess around, she said softly. Read the words before he does something horrible. I held the photo tightly in both hands to keep them from shaking. Goodbye forever, Slappy. I said, and then slowly I whispered the ancient words, Karu, Mari, Adona, Loma, Malanu, Korano. Silence. I could hear the blood throbbing in my ears, and then I gasped as the dummy's hands slipped off the chair arms, and he slumped forward until his head rested in his lap. He stayed there, limp and lifeless. I stood waiting, waiting and watching, but he didn't move again. Then I spun round and pumped both fists in the air. We did it, Molly! I cried happily. We put him to sleep. Did you, though? I expected Molly to jump and celebrate too, but she didn't move. She stared hard at something on the bed. Molly, what's your problem? I cried. We did it. We're okay now. We put him to sleep. Uh, wait, and se wait a sec, Brit. Molly murmured. There's something here I think you should see. Chapter 18 Molly reached into the pocket of Ethan's crumpled jeans and pulled out a small rectangular object. It looked like a TV clicker. She dropped it onto the bed. Why was this hanging out of Ethan's pocket? She, uh, Molly asked. I picked it up and rolled it around in my hand. It had at least a dozen red buttons on the front, but no words. No words anywhere on it. I pushed the top button. Then I gasped as Slappy began to move. He raised his head and laughed. Weird, Molly said. Push it again. I pushed the same button. Molly raises, sorry. Slappy raised his head and laughed again. What's up with this? I cried. I aimed the clicker at Slappy and pushed another button. I'm alive, the dummy screamed in its tiny rasp of a voice. Don't you get it, Brittany? I'm alive! I pushed another button. Don't ever snitch on me again, the dummy said in a whisper. 
I pushed it again. Don't ever snitch on me again. My hand shook as I aimed the controller at Slappy and pushed another button. I don't like you, Brittany. Ah! I let out an angry cry and heaved the clicker onto the, and heaved the and heaved the clicker to the bed. He did it again. I screamed. That creep Ethan did it to me again. I grabbed up the jeans and threw them across the floor. I turned over the crisp bag and emptied it on his keyboard. I knew I was totally losing it, but I couldn't control my fury. He must be some kind of electronics genius, Molly said. The dummy has a computer chip, right? Ethan recorded all those things in... It said, he deliberately did it to all to scare you. It, it's so totally mean, I said, fighting back tears. Ethan spilled the paint on what, on that, Ethan spilled the paint on that woman at Sunset House and insulted all those people and ripped my poster in half and he acted so frightened. Like he didn't have any control over the dummy. All an act. All a stupid act. I tore both sides of my hair. Ah! I knew Ethan was trouble, I said. But I never dreamed he was so mean and vicious. Molly climbed to her feet. What are you going to do now? I let out a long sigh. I don't know. Are you going to tell him? You know he... Are you going to tell him you know what he did? Molly demanded. Are you going to tell your parents? Or are you going to wait a while and get your revenge? I don't know. I repeated my mind. I repeated my mind spinning. A smile slowly spread across my face. But I know one thing for sure. Molly, I'm going to get a good night's sleep tonight. No more reason to be scared. I'm never going to worry about that stupid dummy again. I felt a soft tap on my shoulder. Huh? I blinked. Another tap. I was having the nicest dream. But it vanished as my eyes opened. My brain slowly woke up. Yawning, I glimpsed my bed table alarm clock. It was 2.35 in the morning. I felt another tap on my shoulder. Harder this time. Now I was fully awake. I rolled around and squinted into the darkness. Ethan, what do you want? And then I opened my mouth with in a frightened cry. Snappy! The dummy lowered his grinning face. The big blue eyes looked, uh, locked on mine. His wooden hand shot out and grabbed my wrist. Thanks, he whispered in my ear. Thanks for waking me up, slave. He wasn't even awake. And that was chapters fourteen to eighteen of. Revenge of the Living Dummy by R. L. Stein as part of his Goosebumps Horrorland series. In the final part of this reading, it will be chapters 19 to 22. Until then, thanks for watching.